Gaming isn't the same as it used to be. More specifically, multiplayer gaming isn't the same as it used to be. These games just don't generate that buzz that a Modern Warfare or a Black Ops 2 or even the real OG Fortnite had. And despite them being some of the most popular games, they all feel like the same game. And that's because of the one thing that unites them. The Battle Pass, which can be the rise or demise of a game. Today, we should all be pretty familiar with the concept of a battle pass. You complete challenges, get XP, and move up tiers or levels and get rewards with the ultimate goal of completing the battle pass. Paradox is a statement that is seemingly contradictory or opposed to common sense and yet is perhaps true. For example, in the Dark Knight, Batman won't kill the Joker because deep down he knows that he needs the Joker to continue being Batman. In Interstellar, there's the bootstrap paradox when Coop is in the fourth dimension contacting young Murph. So when a game combines these two terms, it creates a cycle, or as the game would call it, a season, where you buy the battle pass, complete these challenges, get rewards, and by the time you're done completing it, the next season is already right around the corner, and therefore the cycle has already started and will continue on until you quit buying the battle pass or participating in it. Now, whether it's good or bad is really just a matter of opinion, but the effect it has on the gaming experience is easy to see. So in 2013, the game Dota 2 combined these two concepts of cosmetics and rewards and formed it into what we know today as the Battle Pass, but back then it was called the Copendium. And the Copendium was giving players in-game content if they purchased this bundle and 25% of that revenue would go towards the tournament pot. Fast forward five years in 2018, Fortnite would open the Battle Pass Pandora's box and the idea of a Battle Pass would spread far and wide and touch almost every single game, changing the landscape, most notably of multiplayer gaming, forever. Time is precious to us because it's always fleeting so we want things that take our time to be valuable in 2023 a study was done by eric frederickson freeman and his partner ola zuderlin called the dark patterns of battle passes in his study he cites a man by the name of jose zagal who came up with the definition for a dark game pattern and zagal defines it as a pattern used intentionally by a game creator to cause negative experiences for players. And then he breaks down this definition into three different parts. You have temporal, which is does a game cheat you out of your time? Monetary, does a game try to swindle you out of money or make you spend money on the game? And then social capital, is there a social risk at stake in playing a game? Are you missing out if you're not playing or partaking in these microtransactions and battle passes? But more on that later, let's just stick to the temporal, which is the time we spend gaming. Now as gamers, we know games take time. They take time to learn and master. But now with the addition of battle passes, it takes even more time to get the rewards that we want from the game. Now I play mostly Apex Legends, so I ran my own study on Apex Legends. So for the daily challenges, it really only took me about 30 minutes to an hour. And then for the weekly challenges, you have to add on another two to three hours to complete the weekly challenges. Now if you break this down and say you play two hours a day for five days a week, about four out of your 10 hours of playing in that week, you spend doing challenges. Multiply that over the course of the season, which is about three to four months, that's 48 hours of grinding out challenges to complete the pass. And that's just a rough estimate. But don't worry, the new season is coming right around the corner and there are some new skins that you're gonna to wanna to check out. These free to play games thrive off of engagement similar to that of social media apps, but they make a lot of their money on the microtransactions within the game and from the money with the battle passes. Which is why they put a set time to complete the season because it creates a level of haste to grind out challenges so that you don't miss out on the rewards in that season. And that haste ensures that you will continue playing the game, even though we as gamers know that most of the rewards in the battle pass 
are not worth the time that we put in. But also, if you keep coming back to play the game, it gives the game more opportunities to sell you other high value items in the store. Now, spending time on the game is just one piece of the puzzle. Having a lot of players is good for the game because it entices other people to want to play the game because if they have high numbers, then the game must be doing something good or it must be a fun game. But free to play games need you to spend money, which is why they have created battle passes. Battle passes provide a wide variety of rewards at a reasonable price aimed at getting more people to purchase it. And how this becomes a dark pattern is by creating a sunken cost among players. Players buy the battle pass, grind out hours to get the rewards, but by the time they get all of the rewards, there's already another season and a new battle pass coming right around the corner. So there's really not enough time to reflect and understand really what's happening. In an article by Elena Petrovskaya and David Zendel, they created a table which lists players' feelings of microtransactions into eight different categories. In the game dynamics designed to drive spending category, players felt that a game builds dependency on microtransactions. And then the next was just the general existence of in-game currency. Combine those things with the findings in Freeman's study where he says, the inclusion of battle passes have the potential to become something akin to work wherein the player's time and effort are commodified in an attempt to convert players to payers. So you take that, combine it with the table, and you start to see a lot of your favorite games follow the same pattern. Freeman then goes on to argue that players' enjoyment comes second and that the real focus of the games are the battle passes to generate revenue. And like I said, that's not uncommon to a lot of the games that we have nowadays. You have Fortnite, Apex Legends, Valorant, Rocket League, Rainbow Six Siege, the list goes on and on. And it poses the question, does the game really matter or do all the cosmetics in the game matter? And if money is what these game developers care about, then they're losing sight of what gaming really should be. The last point to be made is about the social aspect that battle passes have. Like yeah, I know, I could talk about the social tactics that the games use to get us to buy certain cosmetics or buy this in their game, but we all know about that. That's just marketing 101 and that doesn't only happen in gaming, that happens everywhere. And as backwards as it may seem, I think battle passes and other cosmetics have actually been great for gaming. But does it go a little bit overboard? Yes. But some of the things that come out are objectively cool. Like in Valorant, there's literally a skin that has a fish inside of it. Like, who's not buying that? And that's just one part of it. There's tons of great skins in Valorant, as well as other good skins and other good games. My point being is that with all these different cosmetics, it has allowed games to express themselves in a bunch of different ways. And it also gives a lot of their artists ways to show their talents. But if I did have one gripe, can we stop making first person character skins? Look at Valorant and they have it down pat. All their guns have skins, not their characters. All the guns have skins and they have a variety of different skins that way. Now it's tough to say definitively that battle passes are either good or bad. You'll get a mix of both. And that's kind of what I outlined throughout this video. But the overall collaboration and innovation has made gaming as big as it is today which is going to lead to more conversations. And I think that's how gaming will evolve for the better. And for right now, it just really makes for interesting conversation. So if you made it this far in the video, first off, congratulations, but also comment your thoughts below about what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, peace.